Today we're talking to uh, our new signing, uh, Mitch Hancock, who's uh, joined the club towards the end of the season uh, following the termination of his contract with uh, York City by mutual consent. Mitch, you've been at Ulti a few weeks now and um, it's always a little bit strange when a player comes in at this stage of the season and it's difficult for for clubs to sign players because uh, good players are are, uh, not usually around at this stage of the season but you became available because of some specific uh, circumstances and so far so good I think yeah no it's been great I said the lads have been brilliant since coming in Um, speaking to the gaffer obviously before I came and then when I came it's it's been really good and I'd like to think I've settled in really well Um, obviously the boys are doing really well and it's good to be a part of that and hopefully we can kick on now at the end of the season and obviously try and get promoted which is obviously the aim You're essentially uh, a midfielder, but uh, you've also played a lot of football at uh, left-back as well. So uh, if anything goes, happens with Eddie Jones, we've got a replacement. Yeah, no, that's one probably positive thing about me, about my career, is I've played all over, really. I mean, I don't think I've played up front or in goal, but I've played everywhere else. So, no, if I'm I'm needed there, then I'll do a job there. But obviously, Eddie's been been doing great this season and so far so good. And obviously, the boys in the middle have been doing great as well. So I've been patiently waiting for my opportunity, obviously, to start a game. So... Um, we'll see what happens now over the next couple of games. And you've had a, a pretty illustrious uh, career, 14 years at Birmingham City, a Birmingham uh, lad. And, and, and t- tell us about your time at uh, Birmingham City because they were championship uh, club when you reached the first team. Yeah, no, it was, I think when I broke through, there was two or three of us at the same time. So we was, it was kind of in like, there was a mess upstairs with the board and stuff. So they couldn't really bring a lot of high profile players in. Um, so I managed to get my opportunity and Lee Clark was the manager there and I'd done well in the pre-season went on a pre-season tour and I was, didn't expect to be um, and then yeah after I think it was a couple of months I managed to break myself into the team and I think I played like 15, 16, 17 games or something like that and I like to think I'd done really well and got rewarded with a new contract but as a Birmingham fan um, being a kid as well it was like a great great achievement to me to play for my boyhood club So you're a blue nose Yeah Oh yeah big one yeah <laughs> Of course, we did win at Birmingham City in 1986 in the FA Cup third round. Yeah, so, uh, Noel did tell me about that when I come in. Yeah. <laughs> what a fantastic night that was. We'll, we'll move on swiftly. Most of your football that uh, play, played for Birmingham City was at, was at left-back? Yes, it was, yeah, yeah. And you also got European experience uh, whilst you were there because they, they, <laughs> they won the League Cup, didn't they? Yeah, so when I was a first-year scholar, they, they won it. Um, and then as a second-year scholar, luckily I made the bench in the like the qualifying round they beat National 3-0 away um, and then in the morning I got a phone call saying one of the lads failed a fitness test and I was on the bench and I was like I think I was 17 at the time so I was like oh my god what's this um, but no it was, we ended up winning sorry it was 0-0 away and they ended up winning 3-0 at home and one of my uh, good mates Nathan Redmond is when he scored his first European goal at 17 and he was just it was unbelievable I just remember we went 3-0 up in like the 88th minute or something there was me and a couple of young lads just started sprinting up off the bench because there's still like two subs to go but um, unfortunately I didn't get on but it was a great experience so experience at uh, championship level and you also had a, a loan spell at uh, Crawley in League 2 whilst you were at um, St Andrews. Yes, no, it was a time where I wasn't playing, I wasn't involved. Um, the lads at the time were doing well and I was pushing for the top 10 in the championship and I needed games of football um, and it was Mark Yates, the manager at the time, took a punt on me when they used to have the EFL loan window. Um, so I went for a month initially, um, done really well, um, stayed for another two months I really enjoyed my time. I think I played like 15 games, scored my first ever professional goal there as well. And it was a good little club. Um, we done, I think we've done really well. I think there was towards the bottom we ended up, before I left, just below the playoff positions. Um, but no, it was a great time there. And it was good for me to learn that level of football because I said I'd played a championship at that point, but I hadn't played properly in over a year. So it was just great to get back out there again. And then off to Macclesfield Town for a couple of seasons. And uh, that's where... Uh, your sort of uh, acquaintance started with uh, with John Askey and, and, and two great seasons. Yeah, no, it was unbelievable. So the first season I signed, I, I actually played like a, a pre-season game for him because I needed players and I only needed to get some minutes under my belt. Um, I went on a few trials elsewhere, but it didn't happen for me. So I went back to Mac and thankfully I signed, I only signed a six months initially. Um, and then I managed to sign a new contract in the January time. And I say it was, I think oh, we finished around mid-table that season. The squad that had... Probably underperformed a little bit, but we got to the, the trophy final, which was an amazing day out. Other than obviously we lost 3 2 to York in the end, but um, everything about it was unreal, and to play at Wembley was obviously amazing. 
Yeah, and, and I was at that game, and one of the best trophy finals, I think. Yeah, no, it was end to end. It was open. Uh, yeah, it ended up three two. Um, but no, York. I mean, York had been relegated at the time, and they bought. I think they bought about ten, fifteen thousand, and Mac bought about. I think it was about twelve, fifteen. So it was a good atmosphere there, and um, like I say, everything about it was unbelievable, other than the result. <laughs> And the following season, uh, you became a National League uh, winner. Phenomenal season for uh, for the Siltman. Yeah, no, it was brilliant. So I remember going back pre-season, there was only three of us initially from the season before. So it was a completely brand new squad, um, players coming in from all over. And I think pre-season, I think we played a game at Stockport and I think we lost like 5-2 and we were looking around thinking, oh no, we could be in trouble this year. But we just, I think we started, I don't think we started the season off too great, if I remember correctly. And then we just went on a roll and... We didn't necessarily have a settled team, but we always like made one or two changes, and we just was just steamrolling teams, and um, even games where it was tight. I think we scored something like seven goals in the last eighty-five minutes, and it got us like twenty-one points. Um, and we just just going, and then we just getting believing and believing, and everyone, to be fair to him, was doing it properly. And yeah, it was just an incredible achievement. And I think we had one of the lowest budgets in the league, and to go and win it by I think it was about five points or so, and. Yeah, big teams like Tranmere and stuff in it who were like taking us there all the all the way to the end and no it was unbelievable unbelievable experience so into EFL 2 but not with Macclesfield Town you were with uh, MK Dons yeah so um, the manager Paul Tisdale just took over there and he was speaking to my agent at the time when he was at Exeter and um, the opportunity to come to go there and I was a bit ups- not upset a bit starting to leave Macclesfield because I did really enjoy my time there and wanted to go and play in League 2 for him but I think the, the manager left to go to Shrewsbury. A few lads left as well. So I thought, well, it was a great opportunity for me with MK because they just got relegated from League One and they're going to try and go for a promotion. So um, unfortunately, I didn't play as much as I'd hoped that year because, I mean, you'll see it on the news. Dean Lewington's like played hundreds and hundreds of games. He's a club legend there. And I was playing left back, left wing back at the time. And to be fair to him, it was incredible. So I think I played a lot of cup games and stuff. But now to be part of it, um, we ended up getting promoted on the last day of the season, beating beating Mansfield 1-0, who were third. We were fourth and beat them on the last day. So, no, it was a bit of a mixed feelings about that experience, but it helped me in the end. And then to your hometown club, Solihull Moors, um, and that included a loan spell at uh, Harrogate. Yeah, no, I went there um, signed there. Cause I, luckily, it was on my doorstep, like 15 minutes away where I was staying at the time. And, again, I enjoyed my time there. The first year was a bit stop-start, uh, I had a couple of injuries in pre-season um, and then I couldn't struggle to get like a place in the team so I went on to Harrogate for six weeks which was again was unreal it was a really good experience it's obviously same league um, like to think I'd done okay there and then I went back to Solil. Um I think Tim Flowers was the manager at the time and then he got sacked there was a mutual agreement I can't remember what it was and then obviously Covid happened and we had the last game before we, everyone stopped and we played fold away and ended up uh, breaking my hip so I was out for about six months, but I missed no games of football because COVID stopped everything. <laughs> so in the summer of 2021, uh, Josh Gowling, Gowling, the manager of Hereford, uh, taking you to uh, Edgar Street. And it was whilst you were on contract at Edgar Street that you've uh, had a loan move, move to, to York City, which has turned out really well for you. Yeah, no, uh, Hereford like, started off pre-season. Everything was great. We started the season, wasn't doing too great. And personally, I probably wasn't playing... The- that great myself I was probably I was well probably I was low on confidence and stuff and I got myself out of the team when I was fighting to get back in and this opportunity come to York to go on loan for a month and I was like Look, I want to go play games of football so I went there and, um, and then Steve Watson the manager got sacked after a couple of games I was like, oh no John Askey come in and he um, put me in midfield and then from then on it just I just took off and I think I signed a couple of month loans before signing to the end of the season and I'd gone from not scoring in a couple, of, like a long time, like probably over a year or so, to scoring. That's when like eleven goals I ended up on, and at one point I scored eight in five, and I couldn't believe it. Like lads at the time were like, "What's going on here?" And it was crazy. Um, but no, like it was incredible to go to York and then obviously get promoted. Was just crowned off that that season. It was very similar to what happened with the uh, Altrincham <coughs> two seasons prior. We, I think, we were seventeenth in November. York had a pretty poor first half of the season but they were absolutely flowing with momentum by the time they got into the playoffs and in the end winning the playoff final against Boston United you could see that coming yeah no I think we had a lot of games called off over Christmas because it was like towards the end of Covid and 
we found us, like you say, it was around 17th, 18th, but it was like, we could, if we went and put a run together, you, you never know, you get half chance. And I think we went and run them, we was unbeaten like 14 or 15 games. And it was actually Boston who beat us 2 0 in the league. Um, then we just regrouped, reevaluated, brought one or two players in, and it got us over the line. And we just we just kicked on from there. And I say, in the we played Chorley in the quarter final um, at York, so we finished above them in the league. And you just knew from that game, as soon as we won that game, we just we're going to get promoted. Here. Like nothing was stopping us. And we played Brackley in the semis, and that they'd beat them twice that year, one nil. And then we went to their play, they finished twenty one points above us, and we ended up beating them one nil. And then that game against Boston, you're just looking around the change room, like everyone was, like, everyone was on it and everyone was like, we're going to get promoted. And then we just turned up on the day and it was, again, it was an unbelievable experience. And it's the first time I've been in the playoffs and thankfully it was, um, it'll come well in the end. <laughs> and York City's a, a, a big club. It was the time when they were moving into uh, the new ground. I'm guessing you might have played in the first game at the, at the new ground. No, I think that was just... A, I think it was about six or seven months just before me. Um, but I remember when I was at Maxfield, we played at the old ground. Um, it really, like, I really enjoyed it there. It was like, obviously it was small, it was older, but like it had that old school feel to it. Um, but no, the, the new ground that got the LNER, if I say that correctly, is a really good place. Um, and to be fair, the fans there are unbelievable and they've done well for the club. They've always supported the lads through thick and thin and hopefully they'll get behind them so they can try and stay up this season. And. First season back in the National League, you played a lot, a lot of games and uh, overall it was a decent season for York City. Yeah, it was. I think at the start of the season, it was obviously the aim to sustain the league and we started the season bright. So we were thinking, well done, why can't we go push for playoffs? Um, and then there was, a, I mean, I was there for three year, well, three season, there was like three, three chairmen and like five managers. So there was a lot of turnover and new manager come in, um, form dropped, confidence dropped. Again, then another change of manager, and we we got to the point where it was like, we're not doing too great, but we needed to rally around, and we had a really good group of lads, and we fought until the end and managed to stay up. Technically, on the last day of the season, but um, before that, we I mean, I think it was like the Easter break, we had Chesterfield away, beat them three one, and we played Barnet at home and beat them one nil, and that run of games really saved us. And. Um- John Askey actually lost his job after the game against Altrincham, which was live on TNT mm. or BT Sports, as it, as it was uh, then, uh, which I think was a big surprise to everybody. Yeah, it was. I say, I mean, if you asked any of the like, group of lads from that changing room, was everyone was gutted when he left. Um, I think it was a falling out with the owner or something at the time. But no, it was it was a massive shame because although we, I think we're not winning five at the time, we were still in a really good position, um, and you had. 2022 20, lads was willing to run for a brick wall for him so like I say it was a massive shock and the boys reacted well in the end as obviously the season's panned out staying up but you just don't think what could have been almost and of course Ethan Ross was a, a teammate of yours at, uh, at York City um, and I'm sure you were fully aware of what a good goalkeeper he was uh, then but he's been magnificent for Alty this season oh yeah when Rossi came in last year at York, it was unbelievable. He was like, like this season, some of the saves he puts off, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like you're thinking, oh no, they're going to concede and it just comes up with like, like a superhero coming out. But no, even since the time I've been here, he's been doing really well. Obviously, I know he, he broke his ribs, was it around Christmas time? And he's come back and he's been flying. And no, he's, he's, one thing about Rossi is he's a great character and he's a great around the place. And he, like, he's, for me, he's a, he's a big leader and he drives people on and he performs on the pitch, which is ultimately what you want, but around the place, he's, you can't ask for more. And Altrincham seems to have the Indian sign over York in, uh, in, in recent times. Uh, last year, came from behind in front of the TV cameras to win 2-1 uh, two and then uh, two further 2-1s two mm. at uh, the LNER Stadium, one on the Saturday, one on the, tr- on the Tuesday in the FA Trophy and uh, league, uh, I think, and of course we've just beaten York uh, six uh, six one. So we we see we, they're not a team that we uh, they like to see turning up on their doorstep. No, not at all. So I remember the game last year. It was um, I think Ulti scored two two headed goals from exactly the same set. I think it was James Jones who scored both in both games. And I remember being in the change room. You're thinking, how the hell has that happened twice in a row? But no, I remember. I think it was the trophy game. It was that like Jordan Hume who was here last year. He's, I think he scored one of the goals and I was playing left back in the game and he pulled it from my legs and I was like, oh, for God's sake. But no, it's, it's almost like um, they just can't get anything out of him. And say, I would have thought the game, obviously when the boys beat them 6-1, it would have been a bit tighter, but 
obviously there was a few mistakes in the day and fair play to Alti, they rolled over them and kick-start the rest of the season. And this season, the reason you're at Alti is it hasn't really worked out at York City. You've not played uh, too much football. Clearly, it's a, the club's in a, a difficult situation at the moment, although recent results have been superb. Yeah, no, I found my game time limited um, under the old manager and the manager there now. So when um, this opportunity come to initially was meant to be coming on loan, um, but that fell through, unfortunately. But I just needed games of football. I'm at the age now where I, I just want to play games of football. And when this opportunity come, I was like, I need to take it with both hands. So um, I still had six months left on my contract at York, but I come to an agreement with the club there to say, look, I want to go play games of football. Um, this is a great opportunity for me, so and I was willing to take it. And credit to the gaffer, he was patient with trying to get the deal done. Um, I think he wanted to get it done a day or two before, like I did, but for circumstances held that. But now I'm just glad to go over the line. And I say, since I've been here, it's just been first class. And uh, you haven't started a game yet, but um, that possibly might change because George Wilson's obviously uh, received a red, red card at uh, Dorking on uh, on on Saturday. But um, it's re really good to have you on board to strengthen to strengthen the squad. And you must be pleased with what you've done on the pitch so far because uh, you've certainly made an impression on the Alti fans. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I'd say I'd, I just thought as soon as I come in, I'm just going to keep my head down. I'm going to obviously get to know the lads. I'm just going to work as hard as I can. And it's a great opportunity for everyone, like even for myself, even if I play. I even said to, while well, speaking to my, my partner and stuff, saying, look, if, even if I make eight sub appearances, it's still going to look better for me being a part of a club that are going for something. Um, and I just think when I'm on the pitch, I've got that mentality of like, well, this could be my last game ever. So I always try and make sure I give my all. And if my quality is not there, then so be it. But I'll always make sure I'm running around, putting tackles in, because that's a big strength for my game. Um, but yeah, so when I come in, obviously the boys have just won 6-1 against York. So I didn't anticipate coming in the starting 11 straight away. But I've been patient and look, if I get a start on Saturday, happy days, I'll make sure I grab it with both hands because ultimately I want to stay in the team and help the team out as much as I can to obviously try and achieve our goals. And you've just certainly joined at a very exciting time of uh, the season. Two games left now in the National League and hopefully uh, hopefully uh, the playoffs. How do you, how do you assess uh, Alti's chances? No, I think we've got a really good chance. I think speaking to the boys, it's like whoever we get in the playoffs are, are back ourselves, whether that's at home or away. Uh, ultimately you want to try and finish as high as you can and you've still got half an eye on finishing third obviously it's all results dependent but these next two league games is all about for me trying to get six points and touch would get through with no injuries and stuff so we're going into that whether it's that quarter final which more than likely going to be or the semi-final that lads are already fit and ready to go to try and kick on and get to that final at Wembley and how uh, how well does the the style of play we've got at Alti suit you well, it's, it's, I was speaking to the gaffer about it the other day. So I've been a part of teams where it's not really kept the ball as much. So it's all been about second balls and making those deep runs. So for me, it's, it's learning and adapting, um, which I'm trying to do quite quickly because one, it's going to benefit my game and myself. And two, it's, I don't want to be out of place when I'm, when I'm called upon. So um, how we play, is, it's brilliant with the interchange and obviously the fullbacks coming inside and the wingers coming inside. And, uh, you've got the midfielders to keep the ball. So it's, it's refreshing for me, um, especially at my age, obviously learning this style of play. And I just say, when I'm on there, I don't want to let the team down. So I want to keep the ball, keep it moving. And if I need to put my foot in there, make sure I do. And you're, you're a relatively experienced, uh, one of the more experienced members of the squad in what is quite a, a, a young squad. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think we're saying there's only a couple of us over 30. Um, I'm thinking, Jesus, usually round 30, usually in the middle of the pack. But no, it's a young squad. And to be fair, it's a young and it's a hungry squad. Everyone wants to do well. And there's a really good vibe out of place. And obviously that helps with winning games of football and the league position we're in. But there's no one that I'd say was like a bad egg or anything. Everyone wants the same thing and everyone wants to progress their careers. And if everyone keeps working hard and in these last few games give everything they can, then it's going to be a great chance for everyone to succeed.